Hey guys, today we're going to talk about a topic that I am beyond tired of dealing with and becoming increasingly frustrated with, and that is cell compression, or more specifically the process of assembling these aluminum cased prismatic lithium iron phosphate batteries into battery packs. Now I've had these batteries sitting here for months now, back to I think it was April or May, somewhere in there, and I still have not put them in service because I cannot figure out a way that I am satisfied with to put these into a battery pack. I've tried steel straps, I've tried threaded rods, I've tried zip ties, I've tried just putting them there loose. And I just can't find a way that I'm 100% comfortable with. And it definitely seems to be more difficult than it really should be. Uh, so the purpose of this video really is I'm just going to go over what I've found, what I've seen, uh, things that I've kind of learned, and, and just kind of explain my ideas and my concerns. And hopefully that will get a little discussion going. Uh, so behind me you'll see here a large collection of lithium iron phosphate batteries and these are all or almost all of the uh, batteries I've tested throughout the past year on this channel. So we're going to take a look at how these are assembled because these are assembled by people who are educated and much more experienced professionals in this field um, or at least I would hope they are. So we'll see how they built their battery packs and maybe we can learn something and go from there. So first we really need to talk about what we mean by this idea of compression. A better term for it is actually a fixture, and that's what's referred to in the manufacturer's specifications for individual batteries. There are people going around talking about compression, and they end up like squeezing the heck out of their batteries, and that is wrong. That's going to cause them to short or vent or burst or some other problem along the way. So first, we really need to establish whether or not the batteries actually need to be fixed. Um, and to do that, we're going to turn to the manufacturer's actual specification for these batteries. So I have here the data sheet for the two cells I've been working with. I have the EVE LF230, this is version D specification, and I have the EVE LF280 version E specification. So we'll start with the uh, 280 here first. It gives a cycle life of 2500 cycles without fixture and 3500 cycles with fixture. So right away you see that we are getting an additional 1000 cycles if we fixture the batteries versus have them loose. So per the specification document, I can reason that it's okay to use these without fixture. The fixture simply increases their cycle life count. So over here we can see it defines the amount of force as 300 kgf, which is kilogram force, which if you convert this to uh, US units and then divide it by the area of the cell, it comes out to roughly 12 psi or pounds per square inch. So another thing that's worth noting is that these cells do expand and contract under normal use. And I see that evidenced here in the original specification so we have the thickness at 30% SOC or state of charge is 71.5 millimeters plus or minus one millimeter. The thickness at 100% state of charge is 72 millimeters plus or minus one millimeter. So we can see here there's a half a millimeter difference between 30 and 100% and that's in the tolerance really of plus or minus two millimeters. So one additional thing to note is that fixture was not always in the specifications. We can see here that the first document came out on October of 2017 and the fixture was not added until April of 2019. So now looking at the 230 amp hour document, the cycle life is only given one time. It's the same force, 300 kgf, but it's not given in a reading without fixture. So, so my personal opinion is this should not be used without some sort of fixture. However, I also noted the dimensions given here are given with a 200 kilogram force of fixture at 40% state of charge. Again, it does not give the thickness without fixture like the other document did. So my conclusion from that really is that these 280 amp hours do not need to be fixed, but these 230 amp hours should be fixed. If you disagree with that, uh, please let me know and please let me know your reasoning behind that because again, I am not an expert and I am here to learn. All right, so with that out of the way, let's take a look at some actual batteries. So we have over here the Lilied battery. This is the Roy Pau battery. This is the Lion Energy battery, the Basson battery, we have the SOK battery, and we have the big battery, uh, OWL. Interestingly, I'm pretty sure that the Roy Pau and the Lion Energy battery are made by the exact same manufacturer. So looking at how these batteries are built, I can see one and two are using this uh, reinforced tape as a way to squeeze them together. This one has no fixation whatsoever. And this one simply has this plastic piece going across the top and the bottom. We also have the SOK, which is reinforced with steel on each side, along with the big battery also reinforced with steel on each side. One thing also to note is that all of these batteries, except for the big battery, have space between the cells, 
whether that be an air void or some sort of rubber material. So we can see the Lily has space between the cells with a rubber separator at the top and the bottom. We can see the Lion Energy has space as well, though the separators go left and right with a glob of, I don't know, some sort of yellow stuff in between. Uh, the Roy Pow is actually air separated even though it looks like it's filled in. This is just filling the gap on the outside. There is actually nothing in between the cells here. But uh, this plastic holder is keeping them spaced apart just a little bit. And then we also have the Bastin battery. There's no air between these cells, but there is a some sort of uh, rubbery material. The SOK battery has rubber material at the top and the bottom, and it's also got material between the cells, all except for I think there was one location. Down there it does not. And the big battery battery has nothing between the cells. So interestingly enough, we can see even the professionals are not compressing their batteries. Um, those that are held in place are either steel enclosures like back there, which are fine, but there is space between the cells for them to expand and contract. Uh, or they're just using something like this fibrous tape, which I personally think is a great idea as well. So now let's talk about some of the concerns I've had with some of the various designs I've tried. So I'm actually perfectly okay building my battery pack like this with uh, either air or some material between, um, and then just putting a wrapping of uh, that tape, that reinforcing tape around it. However, we've established that these cells do expand and contract under normal operating conditions. So the main thing I am concerned about is simply stress on these terminals. They have this little lump in the bus bar that goes up and comes back down, and this is made of aluminum. Aluminum is a very soft material. So if these batteries start to expand, this aluminum will bend very easily to reduce the force that's applied on these terminals. Now if I take these 280 amp hour batteries, they came with this 2 millimeter thick copper bus bar, which I really liked at first, but I now see is potentially problematic because when I tighten this down, this bar is not going to bend. So when this cell comes out just the half a millimeter, it's now putting stress on this bus bar and it's putting stress on these two studs of the battery. Now yes, I can put space between these with some of that uh, rubber material or just somehow space them. But you can still see here how there is not much space between these batteries that's supposed to account for the expansion of both of these cells. So eventually this could expand enough such that it is still putting force on these terminals even though I've got the space between it. You know, in my opinion, I, I don't like these bus bars anymore for this reason. So we have these EVE 230 amp hour batteries and these came with a different style bus bar. These are still copper, it's got a nickel plating or some sort of plating, um, but you can see it's, it's done in two different strips of nickel, and it's got this little hump in the middle. Originally I had said I don't like this style of bus bar, but I completely understand now, and this is actually what I'm preferring. We can see there is now the lump in the middle, even if you spread them apart, so that as this expands, if, if any pressure is put between these two batteries pushing them apart, this bar will bend to absorb that force you can see it's very easy to bend apart like that. It's not aluminum, but because it's two uh, thin strips of copper, it's very easy to bend. Going back to the EVE 280s here with the solid bus bar. Yes, I did fix them uh, in my design. Well, I used threaded rod and I've got three quarter inch plywood at each end. However, I'm concerned that as these expand and contract normally, even though it's fixed like that, number one, that it may be fixed too much, applying too much pressure on these cells. I don't know at what point this is gonna vent or burst. Right, so I've seen some people say that they put springs on the end of their threaded rod, which will apply a constant uh, amount of force, giving it the 12 PSI that's required by the spec sheet. However, if you do that, you still have the problem of the need movement in here somewhere for these cells to expand and contract. And this is only two cells here. Uh, if you can imagine the battery pack I built, I have 10 of these in series. So the middle two are going to push out a millimeter. Then the next is going to push out a millimeter, then another millimeter, and it eventually adds up to be a lot of force. And I want as little stress as possible, as close to zero as I can get. So I hope that makes sense. I know it kind of sounds like I'm rambling, but like I said in the beginning, I'm kind of uh, very tired and frustrated with this particular topic at this point. So I was okay using the 230s, simply taping them together with this reinforced tape and some sort of spacer in between since they do have the flexible bendable bus bars. However, these 280s still have me at a loss as to what to do with. Now interestingly, I've been working on this video for about a week now, uh, trying to plan out what exactly I was going to say and doing some research, and in that time, another YouTuber published a video discussing this exact topic. Now, if many of you know him and probably have already seen the video, it was Will. His cells are actually much more bloated because he had bought them from somewhere he probably shouldn't have, but I think he was trying to look at the price point. 
But the point of the matter is, one of his viewers, I think, has actually solved this problem in the time it's taken me to put this video together. So the solution from one of his viewers was to take the cells like this and put them in a snake-like pattern. Because now we can leave space between the cells since they don't bulge at the left and the right here. And then simply put the bus bar to join them in series across the top. Now that looked pretty good and it seemed to work for his particular cells, however, Apparently my terminals are inward more than his, so my original bus bars do not fit. Even if I push them straight together, they do not reach enough. So that's a problem. That does seem to work with the 230 amp hours fairly nicely. I can get a nice quarter inch gap or less, maybe an eighth of an inch in between them. And this bus bar still fits on with plenty of room. So now the idea is if I continue putting these in a snake-like pattern, if I put these cells five wide, which I think is what I can fit on my shelf, a 16S battery pack gives me three cells wide at the widest point. So I would have the long connectors like so. I can still put some space between these two cells that are joining and I can put a smaller flexible bus bar on to allow them to expand and contract. If I wanted more space I can move the rows apart further and put a longer bus bar. So what I may do is tape these together in groups of three and just put that reinforcing tape on lightly the same way it's done on these other batteries back here. That way I still have battery packs that I can pick up and move around instead of individual cells. They are somewhat fixed, but they're not actually being compressed. There is room to expand and contract between them without stressing these terminals. But then the problem with that is it becomes more difficult to do a 2P16S. I still need to put connections in between like so, whereas before I only needed two per row, now I will need one, two, three, four, five, six per row. So. So if I want to do that with my 280s, unfortunately I have to either make a longer bus bar or, I don't know, find some other way or some other method to get this done because, like I said, I'm, I'm kind of tired of messing with this at this point and these cells are still sitting here months and months later. So the only thing I haven't spoken on that you may still be wondering about is by not fixing them and just using tape on them, that's going to reduce the cycle count. And the answer is yes. At 2,500 cycles, that's over five years, I think, if you cycle them once every day. Now that rating of 2,500 cycles means charging from 0% state of charge to 100% state of charge and then back down to 0% state of charge using a 1C rate or 230 amps on these 230 amp hour cells. That's just not going to happen in an off-grid storage setup. I am never going to charge these anywhere close to 230 amps. In fact, I intend to fuse these at 110 amps and even that's going to be excessive. In addition to not pushing them anywhere near 230 amps, they're not going to be full cycled every day. They might go from 100% down to you know, 60% and then back up to 80% and then back down to 50%. I'm not going to push them beyond the 10 to 90% state of charge uh, specification either. So I believe in my personal opinion that by doing that I'll extend the life of these cells beyond 2500 cycles even though they will not be fixated at a 12 PSI rate. Uh, so with all of that ramble and information being said, I would love to know what you guys think. Do you like the snake-like method? Should we continue using the threaded rod? How would you build these packs? You know, are you concerned about stress in the term? I certainly don't want one of these cells to internally short because of damage to the stud. That would be catastrophic in my opinion. So I want to thank you for watching uh, and thank you, Will, for your videos that you put out at an interesting time there. Any comments you guys can provide or suggestions, please leave those down below. Let's see what kind of interesting discussions we can get going. And uh, don't forget to hit that like button before you go.